In the previous video, we have studied the transmission line resonator of short circuited lambda over 2 transmission line. And we said that for short circuited lambda over 2 transmission line, the equivalent circuit is a series RLC resonant circuit. In this video, we are going to continue discussing transmission line resonators by other two examples. The first example is short circuited lambda over 4 transmission line or quarter wavelength transmission line, short circuited. And the second example is open circuited lambda over 2 transmission line resonator. For the first case, with short circuited lambda over 4 transmission line, the input impedance for such short circuit transmission line is given by Z0 tang alpha plus J beta F. And as we have mentioned in the previous video, this tang can be expanded as tang alpha L plus J tan beta L over 1 plus J tan beta L multiplied by tan alpha L. When the length of the transmission line is lambda over 4, the value of tan beta L or the value of beta L would be 2 pi over lambda multiplied by lambda over 4 would be pi over 2. And actually, the value of 10 pi over 2 is infinity. So, in this case, this term would be quite large. And this term would be quite large. So, we can ignore this term with respect to this term. And we can ignore this one with respect to this term. And instead of this, we are going to divide both the denominator and the denominator by tan beta L. So by dividing by tan beta L, it would be dividing by G tan beta L. Dividing by G tan beta L, it would be 1 minus G tan alpha L multiplied by cotan beta L, which is 1 over tan beta L. Okay, and in the denominator, it would be minus j cotan beta L, because we are dividing by j tan beta L, and j over j it would be unity, we are dividing by that, so the remaining part would be tan alpha L. So, the difference between this form and this form is that we have divided this form, both the denominator and the denominator, by J tan beta L. Okay? Thus, the input impedance in the present case is presented in terms of tan alpha L multiplied by cotan beta L over tan alpha L minus J cotan beta L. Actually, cotan beta L, when L is nearly lambda by 4, or in other words, beta L is nearly pi over 2, the value of the cotan in this case would be nearly zero. This means that at exactly lambda by 4, the input impedance would be Z0 over tan alpha L. If we are going to study the input impedance, around the resonant frequency such as at omega it would be omega naught plus delta omega then beta l it would be omega naught over vb multiplied by l which is beta naught plus delta omega over vb multiplied by l where vb is the phase velocity omega naught over vb is beta which is 2 pi over lambda. And L is lambda over 4. So, 
this term is actually pi over 2. On the other hand, if you are going to multiply the second term, both the denominator and the denominator by omega naught, so omega naught over VB, it can be replaced by beta. Beta multiplied by L, it would be pi over 2. And the remaining part it would be delta omega over omega. So, around the resonance, the value of beta L it would be pi over lambda plus pi over lambda multiplied by delta omega over omega. In this case, cotan beta L would be cotan pi over 2 plus pi over 2 multiplied by delta omega over omega. This cotan can be simplified as minus 10 pi over 2 delta omega over omega. And because delta omega is much smaller than omega naught, the argument of the tan in this case is very small compared to unity. So, the tangent of this value is nearly the fa it's this value itself. This means that cotan beta L in this case it would be nearly equals minus pi over 2 multiplied by delta omega over omega. On the other hand, for a small attenuation, tang alpha L it can be approximated as alpha L, such that the value of alpha L is very small, so tang X is nearly X. Okay, now by using these approximations in the form of the input impedance, we can say that the input impedance Z input will be Z naught multiplied by 1 minus J tang alpha L it would be minus J alpha L multiplied by cotan beta L would be minus pi over 2 delta omega over omega naught minus multiplied by minus would be plus so it would be 1 plus j alpha l by multiplied by delta omega over 2 omega the denominator it would be instead of tang alpha l it would be alpha l instead of minus j cotan beta l it would be minus minus so plus j by over 2 Delta omega over omega naught. So J by delta omega over 2 omega. Actually, the value of alpha L is a small value, and the value of by delta omega over 2 omega naught is a small value. So the multiplication of a small value by another small value it would be a very small value. This means that we can ignore this term compared to this unity. Thus, the input impedance is approximately equals to Z naught over alpha plus J by delta omega over 2 omega. This assuming that the value of alpha L by delta omega over 2 omega naught is much less than mu. Now, if we compare this input impedance with the input impedance of parallel resonance circuit, we said that the resonant impedance of parallel RLC circuit near the resonance nearly equal 1 over 1 over R plus 2J delta omega multiplied by C. This means that the input impedance of short-circuited lambda over 4 transmission line is equivalent to a barrel resonant circuit, where the value of R in this case it would be alpha L over Z naught, the value of 1 over R, the value of 1 over R it would be alpha L over Z naught, or in other words, R it would be Z naught over alpha L. On the other hand, the value of 2J delta omega C, 
would equal j by delta omega over to omega naught over z naught. So the value of c it can be obtained as y over 4 omega naught z naught. And because omega naught equals 1 over square root L multiplied by C, and we already know the value of C, we can obtain the equivalent value of L. So the equivalent value of L it would be 1 over omega naught squared C. At the resonance frequency, when delta omega is zero, the input impedance it would be z naught over alpha l, which is the value of r. So at the resonance, the input impedance z input would be r, which is z naught over alpha l. And it should be noted here that the value of l it can be determined in terms of beta as l equals by over 2 beta at the resonance frequency. So we can replace this value of L by by over 2 beta. Or in other words, the value of R in this case, it would be 2 beta Z naught over alpha multiplied by by. Another example for transmission line resonator is open circuited lambda over 2 transmission line. We have already studied the short circuit lambda over 2 transmission line. For the case of open circuit transmission line, the input impedance it would be instead of tange, it would be cotange. So the input impedance for open circuited transmission line, it would be Z naught cotange alpha plus J beta L. And when the length is around lambda over 2, this means that the value of beta L is nearly by. This cotange can be simplified as z naught multiplied by 1 plus j tan beta l tanh alpha l over tanh alpha l plus j tan beta l. And as I said, l here is chosen to be lambda over 2 at the resonant frequency omega equals omega naught. At slightly shift from the resonant frequency, omega, it would be omega naught plus delta omega, where delta omega is much small than, is much smaller than omega naught. Thus, the value of beta L, in this case, it would be by, which is actually beta L at the resonant frequency, plus by multiplied by delta omega over omega naught. Thus, 10 beta L around the resonance frequency, it would be 10 by plus by delta omega over omega naught, which is 10 delta omega by over omega naught. Assuming that delta omega is much smaller than omega, such that the argument delta omega by over omega is very small value, we can approximate the, this value of 10 to be the value of the argument directly. Thus, 10 beta L would be approximately equals delta omega by over omega naught. On the other hand, for a small attenuation, 10 alpha L, it would be nearly alpha L. Now, by taking the approximate form for 10 beta L and the approximate form for 10 alpha L, in the form of the input impedance, we can say that the input impedance would be approximately equal 1 plus J 10 beta L, it would be J delta omega multiplied by pi over omega naught. 
multiplied by tanh alpha l it would be alpha l over tanh alpha l it would be alpha l plus j tan beta l it would be j multiplied by delta omega by over omega no because j tan beta l is very small quantity and tanh alpha l is very small quantity this small quantity multiplied by this small quantity would be very small compared to 1. So we can ignore the multiplication of tan beta L multiplied by tan alpha L compared with unity. So the input in BS would be approximately equals Z naught over alpha plus G multiplied by delta omega by over omega naught. Once again, this form is a form of the input in Venus for parallel resonator. This form is equivalent to the input in Venus for the parallel resonant circuit at a frequency close to the resonant frequency. Such that the value of 1 over R is alpha L over Z naught, or in other words, R equals Z naught over alpha L. And the value of 2j delta omega c would equal j delta omega by over omega naught over z naught. So the value of c in this case would be by over 2 omega naught z naught. And if we know the value of the capacitance, Omega naught equal 1 over square root L of C M L multiplied by C. So we can obtain the value of L in terms of the value of C as L equals 1 over omega naught squared C. In this way, we can obtain the equivalent parameters for the equivalent parallel resonance circuit for the open circuited lambda over 2 transmission line section. It should be noted here that the value of the capacitance in this case is by over 2 omega naught z naught. However, for the case of lambda over 4 short circuit transmission line, it was by over 4 omega naught z naught. This for short circuit lambda over 4 transmission line for open circuit, it is by over 2 omega naught z naught for lambda over 2 open circuit transmission line. The quality factor, the unloaded quality factor of the parallel resonance circuit is given by omega naught RC. So, in the case of open circuit lambda by 2 transmission line, the open circuit quality factor it would be the value of omega naught multiplied by z naught over alpha l multiplied by c which is by over 2 omega naught z naught by multiplying r and c by omega naught we can obtain the unloaded quality factor is by over 2 alpha l and l at the resonant frequency in this case equals by over beta. So we can replace L by by over beta. So the quality factor here is beta over 2 alpha. Okay. All right. As an example, consider a microstrip resonator constructed from a lambda over 2 lens. So we are talking about resonator lambda over 2. And lambda here, it should be noted, it is the guided wavelength, lambda guide, of 50 ohm open circuit microstrip line. So the type of the resonator in this case is open circuit. The substrate is Teflon with epsilon r equals 2.08 and 10 delta equals 0.004. With thickness of 0.159 centimeters, and the conductors are covered. The conductor of the strip and the conductor of the ground plane are covered. Compute the required length of the line for resonance at 5 gigahertz. Effectively, this is lambda by 2. 
So, it is required to obtain the guided wavelengths for such microstrip line and divide these guided wavelengths by 2 at frequency 5 gigahertz to obtain the length of the resonance circuit. And also it is required to obtain the unloaded quality factor of the resonator. And as we have discussed in just the previous uh, slide, the quality factor of this open circuited lambda by 2 uh, transmission line resonator is alpha over, uh, is beta over 2 alpha. Beta over 2 alpha. So it is required to determine the propagation constant along the microstrip line and the attenuation constant along the transmission line. Ignoring the fringing fields at the end of this slide. So, we are not going to introduce the effect of the parasitic capacitance due to the edge. Okay. Uh, to obtain the unloaded quality factor, it is required to determine beta. Beta is effectively the value of K0 multiplied by square root epsilon effective. And alpha. Alpha here is composed of alpha conductor plus alpha dielectric. So we are talking about the conductor loss and the dielectric loss. So it is required at the beginning to determine epsilon effective. And from epsilon effective, we are going to determine lambda node at the frequency 5 gigahertz. So lambda guide it would be lambda naught over square root epsilon effective. So we obtain the value of lambda. Divide lambda by 2. We obtain the length of the transmission line section or the length of the, reson uh, the, the, the resonator. Then from epsilon effective, we are going to obtain beta. Where beta it would be K naught multiplied by square root epsilon effective. Then we are going to determine alpha conductor and alpha dielectric. Then the total attenuation, it would be alpha conductor plus alpha dielectric. And from beta and alpha, we can say that the quality factor, the unloaded quality factor is beta over 2 alpha. This is our plan to solve this problem. As a beginning, we have to determine the width of this transmission with this microstrip line such that it would have a characteristic impedance 50 ohm. Returning back to chapter 3, we find the design equations for the microstrip line. The width of the transmission line over the height of the substrate W over D is given by this equation or this equation assuming that W over T is less than 2 or W over T greater than 2. Where the coefficients A and B are determined from the required characteristic impedance, which is 50 ohm in the present case. So the value of A is Z naught over 60 multiplied by square root epsilon R plus 1 over 2 plus epsilon R minus 1 over epsilon R plus 1 multiplied by 0.23 plus 0.11 over epsilon R. We have epsilon R here. We have Z naught 50 ohm, so we can determine the value of A. Then, the value of B is 377 by over 2 Z naught square root epsilon R. Z naught is 50 ohm, epsilon R is 2.0 A. We are going to calculate A and B, and by calculating A and B, we are going to use this A and B in these two equations. And from these two equations, we are going to determine the corresponding W over D. If we use the first equation and obtain the value of W over D, and we found that the W of W over D is already less than 2, so this W over D is correct. If the value is not less than over 2, less than uh, 2, we are going to use the second equation to obtain the exact value for W over D. Once we obtain the value W over D, we already know that the value of D is 0.159 centimeters. So we obtain the value W over D multiplied by 1.159 centimeter. We can obtain the width of the required transmission line.
or the width of the required microtube line. The width of the microtube line in this case it would be 0.508 centimeters. Now we have already determined the width of the microtube line. From the width of the microtube line, we can obtain the effective dielectric constant epsilon effective. Epsilon effective is given by epsilon r plus 1 over 2 plus epsilon r minus 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over square root 1 plus 12d over w. We already calculated or determined the value of w or in other words we determined the ratio w over w. So from this we can obtain epsilon effective. So epsilon effective in this case is 1.8 and this dimension less. Okay. All right. So we have already epsilon effective. From epsilon effective, we can say that the length of the required resonator is lambda over two, and lambda over two is actually lambda is the phase velocity over the frequency. So L it would be the phase velocity over frequency multiplied by two, and the phase velocity of the microstrip line is actually the light of speed c over square root epsilon effective which we have already calculated and the frequency is the 5 gigahertz so the length in this case is c which is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 over 2 multiplied by the frequency which is 5 gigahertz 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the square root of epsilon effective which we have calculated which is 1.8 by calculating this we can find that the length of the resonator in this case is 2.24 centimeters on the other hand to determine the quality factor the unloaded quality factor it is required to determine beta over 2 alpha so we need to calculate beta and we need to calculate alpha beta is the propagation constant Beta is actually is 2 by f or omega over the phase velocity, which is 2 by f over c, which is k naught, multiplied by square root epsilon effective. So, in this case, beta it would be 2 by multiplied by 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 9, multiplied by square root 1.8 over the value of c, which is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8. By calculating this, we find that beta equals 151 radian per meter. So this is the value of beta, which is required to calculate the unloaded quality factor. Now it is required to determine the attenuation coefficient. As I mentioned, we have two attenuation coefficients. One for conductor loss and one for the dielectric loss. The one for conductor loss is given by, for the microstrip lines, as the surface resistance of the conductor over the characteristic impedance Z0 multiplied by the width W. The surface resistance is given by square root omega mu0 over 2 sigma, where sigma is the conductivity of the material. In the present case, the material is covered, and the conductivity in this case is 5.813 multiplied by 10 to the power 7 Siemens per meter. And omega is 2 by f, and the frequency is 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 9. Mu naught is the permeability of free space, which is 4 by multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7. By calculating this, we can obtain the surface resistance at 5 gigahertz would be 1.48, 1.84 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 ohms. This is the surface resistance. Now. From the surface resistance, we can calculate the attenuation coefficient of the microstrip line as Rs over Z0 multiplied by W. Actually, this equation is discussed in chapter uh, 3 in discussing uh, the microstrip line. So, Rs is 1.84 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 over Z0, the characteristic impedance, is 50 ohm. And the value of W, we have already determined the value of W as 5.08 uh, 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 millimeter 
So in M case unit it would be uh, 0.00508. From this we have determined the conductor loss or the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss alpha C as 0.0724 never per meter. On the other hand, the dielectric loss for the trans for the microstrip line is given by this relation, which has been discussed in chapter three for the microstrip line. It is given by K naught epsilon R multiplied by epsilon effective minus one multiplied by tan delta over two multiplied by square root epsilon effective multiplied by epsilon R minus one. K naught is omega over C. So it is 2 by multiplied by the frequency over C. Epsilon R is the dielectric constant of the substrate, which is 2.08. Epsilon effective, which we have calculated, uh, 1.8. So epsilon effective minus 1 is 0.8. And tan delta is the loss tangent of the substrate material, which is 0.004. Uh, from this, we can calculate the attenuation coefficient due to the dielectric loss alpha D and it is found to be 0.024 never per meter. Now, we can calculate the quality factor of this open circuit resonator as beta over 2 alpha. Beta, we have calculated as 151. And 2 alpha, the total alpha is alpha C plus alpha D. So, alpha is 0.0724 plus 0.024 by adding these two attenuation coefficients and multiplying them by two we can calculate the quality factor of this resonator it is found to be 783 this is an example about uh, lambda by two open circuit microstrip line resonator all right okay so in this video and the previous video, we have presented how to design a microwave resonator by uh, open circuit or short circuit transmission line sections. In the following video, we are going to apply uh, this theory for the case of rectangular waveguide and circular waveguide to see how we can make a resonator from uh, a section of rectangular waveguide or a section of uh, circular with one. Okay.